Welcome to the Energy Sovereignty Project. For this quick topic, we're going to be discussing the Powerwall 2 specifically, though what we will discuss here actually does apply to other battery systems as well. But again, this is tailored specifically for the Powerwall 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over some tips and tricks about bringing your system up for the first time and some of the things that you can do to test the system that will allow you to learn some of the system's capacity and how it interacts with your home, these things that you're going to need to know as you try to formulate things like how much of a reserve you might like to have in the battery and how the battery operates at various times of the year. So let's uh, go ahead and get to that. <clears throat> now, the first thing to go over is, is that there's basically three different ways that you are going to wind up installing the uh, Powerwall systems. Either you're going to be installing them as part of an off-grid solution or you're going to be adding batteries to an already existing solar setup. And these two uh, differ greatly from the third way, which is an entirely new system. And so just briefly, let's go ahead and go over what you should do right after you get your batteries installed if you have put in an entirely new system. When the batteries are first delivered and installed, they'll have somewhere between 30 and 60% power in them. That's so that the installers can run all the tests that they need to. But now the problem is, is that once those tests are all completed, the system is still attached to your home. It's still connected to your home. And if you uh, are installing a new system, you might not have your PTO yet or your permission to operate from your utility company. And because of that, the batteries may wind up depleting themselves as they attempt to power the house. And what that will mean is, is that after a week or two weeks after they finally do give you your permission to operate, that your batteries will be quite depleted. And so no point in trying to uh, start from a, a position of a completely dead battery. So what you might want to do is on the side of the power walls, there are switches. Just go ahead and turn your power walls off until you wind up getting your permission to operate and then go ahead and turn them back on. Okay, now that you've gotten your permission to operate, this next part applies to all three different battery installation types. It also applies broadly to batteries, no matter who makes them. Now, this is geared specifically to the Tesla Powerwall 2, and so we're gonna be bringing up screenshots that deal specifically with this set of batteries. But as you follow along with the screenshots, you'll see that the logic is the same no matter who makes your batteries. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do now after we are uh, operating is we wanna bring the batteries up to 100%. Now to do that, you'll go into the app's main menu and you'll pull up the uh, customize menu. Now that's found on the bottom. You may have to actually scroll up just a little bit in order to uh, get it to be visible. Tap that. And then it'll give you a series of choices of how you want the system to operate. Backup only, self-powered, advanced. So what we want to do is we want to set the system into its self-powered mode. And on that self-power mode, you'll notice that you have a reserve setting. Now by setting that reserve setting to 100%, what will happen is, is that all of the solar that is collected will then go straight to charging the battery and you will be running your home off of the grid just like you normally would without solar. And you'll run that until the system reaches 100%. And if your system is a fairly large system like ours is, it may actually take it a couple of days to finally get to 100%. And then once it gets to 100%, all right, well, now that we have our system charged to 100%, we're almost ready to start our drawdown test. But before we do, there's a couple of things that we need to record first. So if you go into your app and you go to power flow, and then you can select any one of the icons to select solar. And what that'll do is that'll bring up your daily graph. Switch on all of your um, uh, contributions, home, solar, the power wall, and the grid icons 
get all of those uh, all of those lit and then scroll up so that you have all of them visible on your phone and take a screenshot because we're going to need that information later okay now once that's done you're ready to go ahead and turn off your grid power before you do that make sure that you have anything that might be damaged by turning off the power turned off not all systems have all their uh, breakers backed up like we do our system is quite large everything is backed up including the air conditioning unit that isn't the case for all homes so if your home is set up so that you only have critical loads backed up here what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you don't have any computer equipment or anything like that hooked up to the uh, grid source when you disengage it but once all that's done go ahead and switch it off so now the home's running completely on battery we don't have any other sources other than the solar that is contributing and we've recorded the amount of solar at the start of our test and so now what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and go back inside and we'll go over some of the other things that we'll be needing to do you know one other thing is that we are currently still producing solar power from the PV panels so when you do go into your emergency backup mode when you first shut off the system it's common that the uh, powerwall system will throw a fault to your PV system and so it'll send it into a temporary reset and so that is also very common if you are at 100% it will most certainly shut off your PV because it's at 100% and without the grid connected there's simply no place to put the power so our inverter has been tossed into a system fault by the batteries so that the uh, batteries are not harmed by that incoming charge all right so that brings us to the point now where we might need to start bringing up some home loads so it might be time to cook a pizza <laughs> so I've turned the oven on and that brought us up to 2.6 2.7 kilowatts uh, but let's see uh, what else we can turn on and maybe bring things up just a little bit quicker so that we can discharge the system faster okay now here's where you have to be a little careful if you have an electric vehicle and you'd like to expedite things you can go ahead and plug it in but because you have the main power off to the home the power is being supplied solely by your power walls if you have a smaller system a one or two power wall system then you can easily get into a situation where you are drawing too much current from the batteries and the system will shut off at that point so in the cases of a smaller system it's probably better that you do things like turn on an oven do some laundry do things that will build up those loads slowly and allow you to uh, deplete your system now on a larger system like we have well then let's go ahead and plug in and start a vehicle charge and so this will now bring us up close to oh probably 18 or so kilowatts of draw and that will help us out by ensuring that we can deplete the battery charge relatively quickly and i'm going to set for us as a 40 percent goal because that will be enough to give me a nice charge in the car and be able to show you guys how to run the calculations for doing the drawdown test So as I anticipated, that brought us to 18 kilowatts. And now what I'm doing is I started a load of laundry and now we're just monitoring the system to try and bring our power down. So this is going to take several hours to do. And in the meantime, we do want to make sure that we very closely monitor both the amount of power that we're using, because again, we said that each of these is five kilowatts and so if you have a three or four power wall system you're probably fine but if you have a two power wall system say you're going to be 
have to be mindful if you have an AC system that is on or something of like that, that you don't get too close to that. If the AC system or some other heavy load kicks on, then again, it could trip the uh, system off. And then the other thing that we want to monitor closely, obviously, is our system percentage. And we're going to be drawing down, like I said, to about 40% in our case. In your case, obviously, you'll want to draw it down as close to that zero point as possible. And I would say that a good place to stop would be in that one to 5% uh, uh, range. Once you've depleted it that far, we'll have all the data that we need to, to be able to figure out if our capacities are correct. All right, well, we just hit that point where we hit 40%, and that's our imaginary zero point. So we'll take a screenshot of that, and we'll also then go into our uh, energy usage area here, and we'll go ahead and, again, pull up all of our data, and we'll take a screenshot of that. And then we'll also take a... Uh, Quick screenshot of the amount of power that we put to the car so that we can finish out our daily log. And then let's head over to the studio and crunch some numbers. Okay, well let's go over the uh, things that we saw on the test really quickly. Uh, so when you set the system to self-powered from a reserve setting of 0% to 100%, it's going to take the system about an hour or so, or can take about an hour or so for it to respond. But eventually you'll see a screen that looks like this. And this is the graphical representation showing that power coming from the solar panels going straight to the batteries and then also all of the home loads being covered by the grid. So once your system hits 100% uh, then the solar should divert to powering the home and then sending any excess back out uh, to the grid. But it's important to remember that just because the system shows 100% on the main screen, it doesn't necessarily that it's completely full. So what will happen is that as you charge up, the system will show 100% and remain charging. That's basically because the system is reading that the batteries are charged over 99% and so then it shows 100%. And I'll get to why that's important in just a little bit here. But for the sake of this test, it's not important. For a future video, I'll be covering how to calculate any losses that you have. So if you're, you're, you think that you have missing power or something like that, that uh, uh, I'll show you guys how to uh, calculate and find where your uh, errors are. But uh, for now, it's enough just to know that if the numbers don't completely line up perfectly, that's one reason why that's, uh, that's the case. So. We hit 100% and then we started our test. And so shutting off the grid resulted in this screen here. So the uh, grid power was off uh, and the batteries were full. And so what happens in that case is, is that the system will shut off your inverters. It doesn't have any place to put the power, so it will uh, kick that off. And so for the purposes of this drawdown test, uh, the important thing is what happens when that system comes back on. And so here you see that the system, once it got to 97% or so, it allowed the solar power to come back on, to re-energize. And you can see here that we're producing 5.4 kilowatts of solar power. And so the issue there is, is that you have to make sure that for the purpose of the test, that in this case, that you're always drawing more than that 5.4 kilowatt hours. And that's why I kind of recommend doing this test either at sunset uh, or possibly to turn your inverters off. But it's best to, to do it at sunset because if you turn your inverters off, then you lose some power you won't it's better to just go ahead and, and let the system run and so that uh, as you're uh, uh, doing your end of day your, your system reached 100 percent all the time between the systems at 100 percent and the time you actually start your test you're exporting power to the grid and being reimbursed for that so now uh, let's go ahead and pull up the combined graphic showing both the before and after screenshots that we took. 
So the uh, first thing we want to look at is how much power was shown going to the power wall. Again, as we discussed before, uh, if we had um, not drawn more than the solar contributed, then this number would not match. Uh, so this uh, number here, 16.8, 16.8, that means that nothing went to the batteries while they were being drawn down. Now one of the dangers of doing this test during the daytime obviously is if you don't keep the home load higher than your solar contribution, the excess power will try and go into the battery and that could make your numbers difficult to calculate or even introduce some variables into the recording that could affect the validity. And so, you know, for example, that uh, uh, making the battery cycle through its inverters back and forth, that could cause more loss than you'd normally be associated with the standard running of the, of the system. And so, because this happened really clean, we can just move on. So the most important number here, obviously, is the from power wall number. Subtract the uh, reading that we had before the test started from the reading uh, after the test was over. And, this will give you the actual amount that the system had uh, discharged in kilowatt hours. And so uh, this is where you'll have to alter this to fit your own system. So each Powerwall 2 battery has a factory spec of 13 and a half kilowatt hours. And so uh, this gives us uh, our expectation because we have six of them. So as you can see from the above graphic, we drew the system down from 100% to 40%, and that's a reduction of 60%. And in that drop, we delivered 44.9 kilowatt hours out of the batteries. And so here, because our system has six power walls, our expected capacity is 81 kilowatt hours at 100%. And so that means then that the expected capacity at 60% is 48.6 kilowatt hours. So that's where we got that number there from. And so uh, we see that uh, from what we expected to what we actually got, we had a difference of only 3.7 kilowatt hours. And that tells us that clearly all six of our batteries are working. And uh, then as we talked about before, the slight inaccuracy there is likely due to the fact that we charged until the system showed 100%. But we, when we started the test, the system was actually still accepting a charge from the, uh, uh, from the solar array. So shortly after the end of the year, we'll be doing a full-blown tutorial on how to calculate system efficiencies. And that way uh, we can take a look at how much capacity the batteries might have lost and other functionality after the systems had been performing for a year. And those are things that I think all of you are interested in finding out. So I hope you found this interesting. I don't want to make this video real long. We'll be doing a couple of uh, more of these tutorial videos over the next couple of weeks to show some other helpful system health checks that you guys can perform. And so that's basically it for this one. So until next time, Good luck with your own systems. And uh, if you have any questions about anything that you've seen here, feel free to ask in the comment sections. And thanks for joining us.